Hello everyone, let's integrate a more general exponential function. And so as you can see here, I put the base as b. And so b to the x, and we want to integrate this function. And we, we in order for this to be a uh, exponential function, then b must be a positive number. And at the same time, b cannot be equal to 1. Because if b is equal to 1, then it becomes a constant function. And actually, as you can see here, b can be e. And then that will go back to our... Uh, the natural exponential function e to the x. And when we integrate that one, we know the answer already. That one, the antiderivative would be e to the x. But right, right now we have b to the x. And the question is, what is the antiderivative um, of an exponential function that's not base e? Let's just think about that. We can do some scratch work. OK, so when we are doing some scratch work here, we actually know how to take the derivative of the exponential function that's not base e in that case. And actually, this is more general than the natural exponential function. So you can also assume that, OK, so this includes the base e case. OK, so right now, let's say you have a function y equals b to the x. OK, and then what is its derivative? So if this is an exponential function where the, the, requirements, the requirements for b uh, all satisfied, then we are going to say what? We are going to say that, OK, so we have the derivative as b to the x. So that's the exact same thing as the original function, except that we also need to multiply by ln of natural log of the base, which is ln of b. OK, so now the question is, how do we go backward? How do we go back to the b to the um, how do we find the antiderivative if we are given b to the x as the function and we want to find y? Let's say our y prime is b to the x without the l and a b. And then how do we go back when in this case? Let's just think about this. So we know that l and a b is really just a constant. And if we, if we go from b to the x times l and a b to b to the x, basically what we're doing here is that we are we are basically multiplying by 1 over L and B. Then we can turn this expression into this expression right here. But remember, multiplying by 1 over L and B is really just multiplying by a constant. So that's not going to affect how we're taking the derivative or integrating the function. And so in this case, if we try to figure out the original function, the y, all we need to do, OK, so we have y equals, OK, so b to the x, right? And then what do we need to do here? We also need to multiply by 1 over l1 of b. And so that means our answer would be b to the x divided by l1 of b here. And so that would actually be our antiderivative. But then we, of course, we should really just verify if that works, right? So now let's say we have what? Let's say our function. OK, so let's just verify. OK, so if our function is b to the x over l1 of b, OK, we are going to take the derivative of this function and see if we are actually going to be getting b to the x. And so if we take the derivative, then we are going to get what? Now, due to the uh, constant multiple rule, we do not need to worry about this 1 over L and B. So we can just leave it in the front. And then we try to differentiate the B to the X, which would give us what? B to the X, L and B. That's what we got here, right? When we differentiate the B to the X. And then as you can see here, now L and B will cancel each other out. And so we are really getting b to the x as the answer. So right now, this answer is correct. We know, right, from this verification here. And so now we can actually just write down a general formula for the antiderivative of b to the x, which is actually what? Which is actually 1 over, OK, L1 of b, and then times b to the x and then plus the consonant integration. So that's how we come up with the answer. So this is one way to come up with the answer. There is another way to come up with the, this answer here. So um, 
let me remove all that scratch work right now. And then I will show you another approach of integrating this, assuming that you do not try to memorize this formula right here. Okay, so let me remove that. Then let me try to do it another way and see how it works. Okay, so what are we doing here? It's this. First, we are going to start with the integral, b to the x and then dx. We are going to rewrite this expression as e to the ln of b to the x. Okay, so let me just highlight b to the x right here. So uh, b to the x and then dx. Okay, so you know that um, the natural log function and the exponential function, the natural exponential function are inverses of each other. So if we compose them, right, if we come, we put the ln function inside the exponential function, then we are just going to get whatever that's inside the ln function. In this case, that will be b to the x. And so this function here, b to the x, is actually equivalent to e to the ln of b to the x. Okay, and then now because we have L1 of B to the X, we can bring the X to the front due to the log property. So we get E to the X. Okay, so let me just use that color here. L X and then times L1 of B. And then times DX. And so right now, what we are going to do is that we are going to let a be equal to L1 of b. Because L1 of b is actually a constant, as you can see here. b is a constant, so L1 of b is also a constant, so we can replace it by a. And so if we do that, then let's see what's going on. Continuing with the integral, we have integral of e to the, well, there was the x there, okay. And then... This L1 of B is replaced by the A. So we are going to get the A here times A. Okay. And then DX. And then if we clean up the expression, we actually will get E to the AX. Do you see what's going on here? I actually did another video showing how to find the antiderivative of e to the ax where a is a constant. And we are going to assume that a is not equal to zero. Okay, but b, how do we know that a is not equal to zero? Because b is not equal to one. So L1 of b is not going to be zero. So a cannot be zero in this case. So now, how can we integrate this one? We know how to integrate this one. This one is actually just one over, okay, the reciprocal of A. So one over A, right? One over A is the reciprocal of A. And then we have the function, which is what E to the AX, just the same function, right? So E to the AX. and then plus the in constant integration. But then what is A? A is actually L1 of B. So let's put the L1 of B back in there. So we are going to get one over, one over um, A, right? One over A. So we get one over, no, no. One over A is L1 of B, right? 1 over a, so 1 over l1 of b. And then e to the, now a is what? a is actually l1 of b, right? So we have l1 of b here. So we have the x, and then a is l1 of b, so we put it back l1 of b. And then so you know that e, to the x times I want to be is really just e to the x times I want to be. And that can actually be written back as b to the x. So, so we have what? We have 1 over 
and then that I want to be. And then what do we get here? Just b to the x. As we know that we, well, actually we did turn b to the x into e to the x I want to be. And then now we can turn e to the x I want to be back to the bx. And then, oh, I forgot the constant of integration here. So, so let me do that. So that's plus c right here. That's plus c here. And that will give us the same answer. But of course, doing it this way will require you to deal with a lot of details and then, but that's good if you know how to do it, because let's say if you don't remember this formula right here, then you can actually derive the formula yourself. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like this video or you find my video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. And then also please check out my other videos. Give me a like and leave me a comment.